Greetings and salutations, Internet Dozens. It is Iowa Fotech, and here we are with a fun little review of the character sheet eat uh, folio for Dungeons and Dragons Next, which is also colloquially known as Dungeons and Dragons Fifth Edition. Even though Wizards of the Coast is very insistent that it is not Dungeons and Dragons Fifth Edition, I personally am in of the mindset it's actually more in line with the basic series of Dungeons and Dragons as opposed to the advanced series. And what we might be getting in 2024 is Dungeons and Dragons Advanced or Advanced Dungeons and Dragons. As you can see, there's many character sheets. Down here, there is a list of combat actions interactions you can perform and a short list of what you can do in a combat round your your three major types of actions move take a regular action which is this section right here and then concentrate with communicate with speech or gestures or both and then there's an interaction section right here as you can see there is this sleeve on the outside it comes off and it's a folder there is actually three types of the first sheet and the biography sheet and the spellcaster sheet in this pop if you notice when I pulled it out that there was a bunch of sheets in the back I'll get to uh, that part uh, there is a super streamlined sheet this is great for people who suffer from sensory overload due to too much stuff on their sheets, uh, attention deficit disorder people, people with anxiety, uh, you know, that stuff. And then we have also, in the case of, let's, let's step back to that, on this sheet, that the minimal sheet, there is just the most important stuff there is there is a box for things you should do and then there's a th box that says things you shouldn't do simplified really simplified there's a race class as background section there's money and your basic equipment and prof and treasure your attack section your ability score bar your basic sick health both section right here, you know, your AC, your temporary hit points, your hit dice, your death saves, passive perception, speed, initiative, so forth. And then you have the modifier box here, saving throw, modif uh, saving throw box. There's little modifier boxes in here. And then there's a short, a shortened list, just a blank section for skills. And it's just only six spaces, which is a typical character is usually only has six skills that they have proficiency in. Whereas sheets like this one, which is the other one, has it grouped by the ability score. And the standard one, which you typically get, it's from uh, the standard one. And what you typically get in the back of the book it has the ability the skills in a separate section from um, the ability scores so that's the gist of that it's always handy to keep the backside blank ink on the sheets just so you can write notes back there I'm gonna go to the next one as I said this one is great for people who have sensory overload issues this one right here is great for newcomers as I said before, it's all the basic stuff. Instead of just like the things you shouldn't do and the things you should do section here, it has your biffs, your personality traits, your bonds, your ideals, and your flaws. You have your standard section of your health condition right here. And you have your weaponry in attack section. You down here have equipment. You have features and traits, like whether you have dark vision, whether you have have feline agility you have also this section down here or which is your other proficiencies and languages and then as I said before when I quickly reference this here's your ability score bar and modifier section and right next to it is grouped with it all the skills that are tied 
to the ability scores by the ability score. <coughs> this is handy dandy in the case is you want to say, oh, hand this to a new player and they don't understand what skill is tied to intelligence. You got Arcana, History, Investigation, Nature, and Religion. It's all knowledge you've read in books or studied for years. That's Intelligence, which is more like Education in Call of Cthulhu. And I pulled that out because once you understand this and how they can structure it, you also then understand and how you can modify it for your, your group and game and go from there. On the back of this sheet is not blank. It is actually your biography, what I like to call your biography section, where it has like you can draw a character picture. You have a section for your backstory. You got treasure. You got additional features and traits, allies and organization section. You have this extra little box right here. I forget what that is actually for. And then you have like your age, height, weight, eyes, skin, hair. Or section up here with your character name and just in case it's you forget it's the character name on the front side as well as your class level race is background alignment player name and experience point level most people these days play with milestone milestone is actually pretty good for say you don't want and uh, your DM wants to be able to control all the encounters and balance it easier. And also that uh, you don't end up with murder hoboing. But of course the issue with murder hoboing is that murder hoboing only occurs because your players there's only gain experience, experience from killing things. Where in fact at experience points are actually awarded for completing tasks and overcoming situations. Now, here is the standard character sheet that you get in the back of the book. You get a whole bunch of these. The same basic setup in the back. I don't have to explain that too far. It's basically the same thing. You get still get the same stuff as before, but instead of it being grouped with your or, ability scores and the modifiers it's broken into a long list just separately and then you have your saving throw box right there and as well with this folio you also get sheets for spell casting these are pretty good for your standard spell casters like your druid you know, for your uh warlocks your wizards your druids your, you know and so forth the problem with this sheet is that uh, in the case of the wizard you can easily overflow this sheet and in the case of the cleric the druid and other classes that have a lot of spells as the game game continues on you'll actually end up with more spells say like in the number one section that you have access to that uh, you cannot fill into the section. This is uh, this sheet is kind of like a dinosaur of earlier times of Dungeons and Dragons Fifth Edition or Next. Uh, it's mostly obsoleted by the fact, that by the intended structure and usage of it, is no longer effective. Because now you have books like Fizban's Treasury of Dragons and uh, Tasha's Cauldron of Everything, which has a whole bunch more spells in it. And uh, due to those extra spells, well, if you were to fill, say, take a uh, druid or a cleric and write down all your spells, because you technically know all your spells as a druid and cleric, as a paladin, you know all the spells, you gain them from divine or an external energy source that comes into you and hands them to you, and you prepare them, which I could actually make a video explaining prepared versus uh, spontaneous and the different variations between character classes. Uh, it's really it's simplified down for 5th edition. In older editions, it's a lot more complex. And as well as in Pathfinder and Starfinder, it's even more... It's uh, slightly less complex than older editions, but it's also still complex. But anyways... It's a nice handy dandy little folder. It comes with character sheets. 
My suggestion is that if you're a non-digital person, you buy this. You got variations of sheets to play around with. And uh, you can just go to the printer and print out more sheets, you know, a copier. And you're good. And having three different variations of sheets, you uh, having three different variations of sheet character sheets means that you have a reference point for different styles of character sheet, which allows for you to have greater understanding of how you like your character sheet oriented. So, there you go. Now, if you enjoy this video, please leave a like on it. If you do not, leave a dislike and leave a comment in the section below. Uh, any advice you have, any thoughts, and see you next time. Thank you very much for watching. Have a delightful day, a nice night, a wonderful week, and a magnificent month, and see you next time.